Hey folks, JP here. It's August 3rd, 2019. I am in Harahan, Louisiana. There's a beehive in the wall here underneath this window. You can actually see the hive. I'll show you what that looks like in a minute. You can see comb. You can see bees on the comb. So we're going to uh, take this little piece of trim out. Then we're going to pull this section out and our hive's going to be right here. I did, I did take a thermal reading. <laughs> The other day, it doesn't look like it's a huge hive, but we're going to get the girls out, and we're going to put them in this nuke today. Hope you all enjoy the video. I don't know if y'all can tell, but this wall is in pretty bad shape. We are not doing repairs today. We just, actually I'm gonna try to put that piece of wall panel in back just until the lady can uh, do proper repairs, but you know, it, it's in bad shape. It's gonna have to be redone. Uh, like this screw right here is not, look, you just pull it right out. And there's some nails in there too. Well, this is coming right off. <laughs> All right. The other side. Uh, oh man, this 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 whole piece of wood might come apart on us, folks. It's really rotten at the bottom here, severely. Uh, see that? Oh boy. Well, motion care mics. Hello. We're definitely reacting to the uh, smoke because I can hear them. It's like a little roar. Almost sounds like electricity a little bit. I can smell more hive now. All right. Good, we got that off. All right, so now we just gotta cut the felt paper and uh, hive will be right there. All right, let's this down. All the stud. And then we'll just pull that piece off and get ready. You'll see the hive in just a second. Okay. All right, gently pull the tar paper off. There's more termites. All right. Let's go over here. Termites and bees, they actually go together. Yeah, see these girls, they haven't been there too long. And they might have taken some hits, some setbacks rather, that's what I mean by that. Uh, because of that big hole that was in the exterior. And every time it rains a good bit, that water's going in there and that might set them back some, you know. We're gonna uh, set up our nuke. And uh, this shouldn't take too long, folks. This is the kind of bee removal beginners dream about <laughs> okay <laughs> yes
D. She's the homeowner, and uh, she's the one that called me. And Dee, when did you first notice that the, the bees were there? Actually, uh, we were trimming all the trees, overgrown uh -huh. shrubs, and we found this treasure. Were they well behaved <laughs> at that point, or did, did anybody get popped? Uh, one got a couple of little stings, okay. uh, but they were using a chainsaw to cut some overgrown yeah. trees over on this edge. Okay, well, you know, that's uh, that's understandable, I guess, but you can see they're, they're, they're pretty gentle. It's not a real big high, folks, okay? Because of that hole up there on the top left before we opened it up, you know, I think whenever it rained, it would probably set them back a little bit. So I'm going to guess they've probably been here <clears throat> maybe two, three months. Does that sound about right? I couldn't, I couldn't even guess. When, when did y'all discover them again? When, uh, how long ago was that? Ago. A few weeks ago? About two and a half weeks ago. Okay. Now you have to have enough bees, you have to have enough nectar, you know, the flowers have to be producing enough nectar for them to build comb. Because not only do they make honey from nectar, but they build comb from nectar. Mm -hmm. So uh, naturally, if, if bees show up and there's a really good nectar flow, they can do a lot more than if they showed up and there was a poor nectar flow. And naturally, if you have more bees show up in the swarm than a smaller swarm, you know, do the math. So, you know, guesstimating, uh, if this was a really small swarm, what we call an after swarm, uh, when they showed up, and if there was a really good nectar flow, but it was a really small swarm, you know, they kind of trudge along. So, and, and, and it could have taken them, I'm, I'm still going to say two to three months to do that, but, you know, if you had a good swarm show up and a decent nectar flow, heck, they can do this literally in probably a week and a half. All three of these cones? Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. So what we're gonna do, Dave, this is called the nucleus hive. It has, these are these are frames right here. Okay, you see I have rubber bands on them. So I'm gonna try to utilize these comb sections. I'll have to trim them and fit them in these, these frames. And I'll put this in the box. So essentially what we're doing is we're transferring the hive from there to here. Okay. This little device here helps us to catch the queen and so uh, we we get the queen mm -hmm. we'll cage her in here and and I get asked this all the time so uh, what happens after you cage the queen so the reason we cage her a is so that uh, we know where she is okay if we're doing this and we transfer comb and all this stuff and the queen decides she wants to be up on the roof on that end then the majority of bees are gonna go with her mm -hmm. after we get all the comb out because then at that point they're essentially back to being a swarm okay mm. What I'll do is, after I cage her, I'll put her on one of the frames, and I'll show you what that, that's like, and we'll just secure her down here, and we'll leave her cage for approximately three days. <laughs> yeah, once we move it to the new site, they may decide, hey, you know what, we really don't like this box, and if they try to leave, guess what, they gotta come back because she's caged. Oh, and I, Yeah, and I've seen them do that multiple times over the course of three, four days. After a while, you know, they, they pretty much have to the, commit to the setup because they have to start building comb to get her to start laying. There's a short window there where they have to get things going because bees only live about six weeks. So they, they need replacements. So, you know, after about three days or so, they're, they're going to start committing to the setup. And then I'll go ahead and release her. That's about that. So, that's a neat little contraption. Yeah, call that a hair clip queen catcher. It's stainless steel. Oh, that's great. Yeah. yeah. All right, so anything else you want to say about this uh, situation here, Dee? Um, I guess, uh, does it have honey right now in the cones? There's probably a little bit of honey. Like you can see that little bit of glistening up here. Right. Okay, that's honey. But it may or may not have been cured yet. What I mean by that is Bees will bring the moisture content, the nectar down. And there's ways they do that. They actually mm. regurgitate back into the, the cells. Other bees take it, mix it with enzymes. They re-regurgitate it back, and that helps bring the moisture content down. They also fan in the hive, like a little de dehumidifying effect. And once mm. they bring the moisture content down below 20%, and that's where fermentation starts, by the way, they'll cap the cells with beeswax. And that's kind of like putting honey in a jar and putting a lid on it. And it'll, it'll preserve it then. Wow. But this honey might be cured, okay? And one quick little way we ascertain that is we'll take the comb sections or frame 
and we'll kind of shake it a little bit. Mm -hmm. And if the nectar flies out, it has a high moisture content. If it, if it doesn't fly out, it's more than likely cured and you can harvest it. So the darker uh, parts of the cone, is that where it's curing, so to speak? Not really sure why this is right here, but it's a funny little spot. It could be because it was the Torah paper was right against there and they, they, they attached it. And for some reason, those cells are just more shallow. And so they're, they're, when they're really shallow, there's not much they can do with them. Oh, so it's almost kind of like a dead spot. Oh. So uh, anyway, well, let's let's get on with it uh, while we have good weather, because we have been getting a lot of rain. I'm seeing some clouds come in. Yeah, appreciate you calling me. And we'll, we'll get started with we'll this. We'll just buzz along. <laughs> Thank there you. you. See, they'll, they'll uh, secure the comb to the top and the bottom of the frame and usually like over the course of three, four days or so and they'll start chewing on these rubber bands and they'll actually chew them to where they pop and they'll push them right out of the hive. Wow. Yeah, sometimes they wind up in the hive and then later on while I'm doing an inspection I'll take the rubber bands out but a lot of times they'll push them right out. Wow. Alright, so we'll put this here for now. And move on to the next one. I'll do the same thing. Give these a little smoke so I can so I'll run them so I can grab that cone. I'm going to show you those cells you were asking about, Dave. Yes. See how shallow they are? Yeah. I think they were just too close to the tar paper. Right. And so they stopped using them. For whatever reason. Definitely. Okay. See that? There's nothing they can do with that. Yeah. These are baby bees. They just hatched out. Look at this, folks. I don't know if y'all getting this or not, but these are... See how they're kind of wobbly, like a young fawn that just oh. the mother gave birth to, and they're kind of wobbly, and they're, they're a little bit lighter and fuzzy. Oh See, that, these, that's a baby bee that just hatched out. That's another one that's a little bit older. It's, it's getting along a little bit better than that one. Look out. And you can see the difference. This one's a little lighter than yes. that one. I'm just going to shake them down in there. All right. Now. I might have cut that one a little bit too short, my bad. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get this next piece out. Try not to trip over the, uh, was that a crepe myrtle or something? Is that what that was, D? Y'all here to cut some crepe myrtles? Oh, uh, I, I, we had so many different kind of growths right here, I'm not really sure. One of these I'm going to pull out, the queen's going to be on it. I don't 
don't see her yet. Alright, let's put this one in. Yeah. I might have cut this one a little bit too short. Ah, perfect. But, oh, that one is good. All right, now we'll go ahead and put this one in here. And now that we have this one framed up, any bees that I shake in front of the hive should run in because of, of these, these framed up comb sections. It'll uh, make them think that this is the new hive. There are some bees in the box already because this boxes house house bees before and that's just familiar sense to them so uh wow all right so we're gonna we should see the queen sooner she might be on the back side of this foam section mm -hmm. i'm gonna have to cut this one again because it's a little long just a little bit we'll take a little bit off another piece behind that so now I can shake this in front and they should start going in the box a little bit more oh well maybe a little more <laughs> all right they don't always do exactly what you want but uh, all right let's see so they really reacted to the smoke see how they running down there D Got it. That's a big chunk. I'm going to let you try this honey too, dude. I'll let you try this. So these things are top heavy. So when you flip it over like that, it's easy to hold it. You know? okay. If you grab it from the top, it's a lot softer and it wants to kind of... Is it soft just from the... Being wet from the well, food. it's because it's kind of new, but also oh. it's it's because of the honey has weight. You know, it gives a bunch of weight to it. This will probably be the last comb section that we frame oh my up. Gosh, I see it dripping. Yeah. Okay. Saw few drops. We're gonna cut this a little bit. I have it upside down, but um, it's a lot more manageable. And I'll just put a rubber band on there, and then I'll go ahead and uh, and I'll flip it over. We can do that now. See? Make sure nobody's pinched. It's all downhill from here now. How long does it take for them to fill in the frame? Well, again, they need nectar to be able oh, to do that. It. So, you know, we're getting on in the year. So, uh, these will probably... We're, we're going to see how they do, but I'll keep them in this box right here for a little while. And um, going in the winter, uh, it's getting close. It's winter here. So it's like in December. We're still in, well, we just got into August. And um, you can always give them frames from another hive with what's called capped brood. Mm -hmm. And those are young bees that are going to hatch out. And when they do, they'll instantly boost the numbers of the hive. So put that there. I gotta do the same thing because it's just easy to hold like this. But see this right here? You get to enjoy that, D. Ah. That's the good stuff, huh? Yeah, that's how. I'm gonna give that to you. Right, here's a piece of honeycomb. Oh my gosh. This is a little bit of pollen right here. Oh look. Okay. And uh you ever tried honey out of the hive like this? Never. I just what I want you to do. Remember I was telling you about when they cure the honey and then they they cap the cells? 
Right. With beeswax, kind of like putting the honey in a jar and putting the lid on it. Yeah. So that's what you have right here. Oh, See, look. these are capped. These haven't been capped yet. Oh, I see. But watch, we're going to shake the comb and see if anything flings out. See? There's a little bit flinging out on this back side. Right. Actually, that was probably honey on my hand. <laughs> see, it's not really coming out. This is probably all cured. That was just something on my hand. Yeah. So what I want you to do, just take your finger and stick it down in there. Don't be bashful. And, uh, and, and, oh, and, wow. Yeah, and try it. Yeah. Go ahead and try that. Oh, my. What do you think of that, huh? Oh my God, that is delicious. Isn't it, isn't it good? Here, try it now. Mm. Go get you a plate or a little container. Mm. Actually, I'm going to hand this to you. Mm -hmm. Open your hand like that, that way you don't rip mm -hmm. on the floor. Is there any bees in there? No bees. Now this is a little bit of pollen. And this is this is good. This is a lot of vitamins and stuff mm. in there, you know? A lot of bee vitamins. Wow, that is amazing. You got that? A lot of bee vitamins. A lot of bees, yes. <laughs> I'm just like looking, I'm like in shock. But you can eat, the honey will help offset the, the pollen taste. The pollen could be sometimes a little bit tart, okay? Yes. But, so what you can do with this, there's not a lot of it, so I wouldn't tell you like to crush it and strain it and all that and put it in a jar. Mm. Enjoy it just like this. Put it in a container that has a lid, like a little Tupperware, and you cut little small squares. Oh, okay. And put the whole thing in your mouth and chew it. Yeah, could, really? Think of it kind of like uh, gum. Okay. And, and, and as you're chewing it, you're getting the honey out. Now there's a lot of honey in this, so just make you a little square. Little you're not tiny. diabetic, are you? No. Okay. Not yet. <laughs> yeah. see, see a piece like this, it'll probably send a normal person into a, a sugar-induced coma. <laughs> uh, yeah. That's what I want you to do now. Okay. Yeah, put, bring that inside, put it in a little container with the lid, and we'll talk more about what you can do with that lid. Okay. Okay, Dick? Thank you. You got it, baby. Ooh, yum. Yeah. Isn't that good, though? It is delicious. Isn't that delicious? See, the stuff in the store is just, it's very mild, usually, you know, it's ultra filtered and it's pasteurized, and you really don't need to do that with honey. So, that has all the goodness, you know, to me. It can help with that, you know. But to me, it's kind of like the difference between like the commercial grade front of the mill uh, dairy milk or like the really good stuff with the cream on top. Right. Yeah. Once you get the good stuff, you don't want the bad stuff. <laughs> it is delicious. Wow. All right, folks. You know what time it is. It's time to find that queen. All right. Let's get in there and see what we can do. All right. So. Where are you? I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to smoke on the knee and see if I can't uh, run any that are down here up. Because in case she's down there, I can run her up. We almost got this look, folks. You know what I mean? You know, with the filming and all that stuff, you know taking them more extra time, but I, I mean, something like this, you can knock this out, literally, I mean, in like 10 minutes, okay? Oh, boy. Come on! She could be in the hive, or she could be below the uh, ice chest. Might have to smoke them a little more and water them up again. I need to show the people the queen! Dang it, folks. All right. All right, folks, we're back on this job. And um, there's no bees in the wall void, okay? But uh, there's a pile of them still on the uh, exterior. I'm gonna check the box, see if the queen's in there. If they were in that wall, they may have gone in from underneath because it was rotten at the bottom. And I'll have to open this wall section up and then we'll cage the queen, put her in there, and we'll be done with that. I had to run off because it was pouring down raining. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and move all over the side of it. And just, uh, The 
ground's uneven, okay? They had to cut a bunch of saplings and crap that was growing up against against the building. So we don't have a real stable working area right here, but let's pull this out to see. I see the queen right now. I thought I saw her abdomen. So she might be getting in, in this wall here. See, it's rotten at the bottom here. See all that? See that? Completely rotten. Oh, there she is. All right, we got her now. Wow. Let me see if I think she's hugging this edge right here. Was having trouble spotting her. I just saw her and I lost her. Where'd you go? Wow, she's a slick one. Well, I just saw her right here. Well, she's running up or running down there. She does not want to be caught. Where'd you go? I mean, she's bright, bright, too. There she is. All right, we got her. Took long enough. All right, I mean, she's not a huge queen, but uh, she certainly Stands out. <laughs> you got it right in front of you anyway. Alright. See? Oh, look out. Exactly what I, what I told you, huh? Right. Abdomen is elongated. Right. Definitely. Wow. <laughs> we got it. So now we'll go ahead and put her in the setup. Great. And uh, they pretty much have no choice but to go in. Hopefully they go in tonight. Um, yeah, let me discuss something. So, in the springtime, when we have temperature differentials, or fluctuations rather, say in the daytime, it uh, might get up into the, uh, you know, depending on what month it is, let's say March, April, even May, maybe we're getting up into the high 70s, maybe low 80s, and at nighttime, we get down anywhere from the mid 60s to lower 70s, let's say, where the temperature drops, say 10 degrees, something like that. The bees feel that and they're inclined to cluster, okay? So if you do a removal, transfer your comb sections into your setup, the bees, uh, because it's cooler then, the bees are going to want to incubate the eggs. They want to cover the brood nest. By nightfall, if you leave the setup there, ordinarily they're always in the box. Okay, fast forward to now. We're in August 3rd, and it's probably, it's actually hadn't been real too, too, too hot, but it, it's probably close to 90 right now, maybe. High 80s, I would say, somewhere in there. But tonight, it's not going to be much cooler than that. So, I did a job yesterday in a crawl space of a house in Gretna. Removed all the comb, was able to frame up three brood comb sections, put them in a deep underneath a sill underneath the house because they were flying in and going in where the nest was uh, from the exterior, maybe about three and a half feet. Went back last night, there were bees in the box, but the majority of them were still clustered under the house, and that's all because of the heat. They will eventually go into that box. In fact, I'm going to be checking on them in a little while, but. Um, like I said, when the temperatures dip some, the bees feel it, and they, they, they'll cluster. When it's warm like this, they lose that innate sense to cluster. So it kind of drives you crazy sometimes. <laughs> you know, on a job like this, yeah, I could have used a bee vac, but I mean, they're so close to the ground, they're going to get it done. This is a service alley right here, so it's not like a threat to anybody. The bees are nice and gentle. So if it takes another day or two for them to go in the box, so so be it. But now that we got the queen cage, all the combs out, this should work out. They should go into this setup by tonight. If not, we'll leave them here another day and I'll come back the next night. But eventually they will work their way into the hive. 
So there you have it. We're going to go ahead and set this back up. Hope you all enjoyed the video. <laughs> Another one from JP the B-Man. Hope you all having a great day because you know I am. You know I am now. Can you try some more of that honey? Well, I moved it from the container I had. Yeah. Like I said, you can cut little squares and uh, you can enjoy it just like that. Right. Yeah. All right, so our queen's situated. We're gonna go ahead and put her in.